Pioneer Smart Wi-Fi app, managing your home network is a breeze. Choose from multiple plans with symmetrical speeds for lightning fast uploads and downloads. Get your family school ready with Go Pioneer Fiber Internet. Sign up today at You might give him a pointers on. All right. Good evening, everybody. Joe Fowler, along with Ford McDonald and Josh Kilhoffer, our engineer. We're ready for football from Jefferson County. And tonight, the Warica Eagles are hosting the Dewar Dragons, who are on the road once again. And uh, the Dragons traveled to DeMont, Arkansas last week. Tonight, we are in Warica, Oklahoma, just a few miles from the Red River. Down in God's country, down here in southwest Oklahoma, it is 85 degrees at game time with 30% humidity, wind out of the north and northwest at 10 to 12 miles per hour. Dragons won the uh, toss and have, have deferred till the, are going to defer till the second half. So they will be kicking and defending the east goal and uh, clad in their red and white uniforms or maroon and white uniforms here, the home team, the Warica Eagles, will receive. Warica uh, has a long, rich tradition of football in the 11-man days and they've had some good years in the eight-man days. They're in a rebuild right now, but it's going to be a, it's going to be a tough fought contest tonight, Cord. Joe, we are romping, stomping, ready to go, full of P and V. I don't know where else I'd want to be on a Friday night. Right here is the place to be. And uh, for those of you that are not familiar with uh, Warica, uh, it is the county seat of Jefferson County. And one of my favorite, and I got an opportunity to meet him a few years ago and sang at some concerts that he was at in his younger days, Gary Chapman better known as Mr. Amy Grant. He wrote uh, most of her hit songs in her early days of the 70s until uh, she and Vince Gill, uh, after they divorced and she married Vince Gill, but uh, he is a contemporary religious singer, uh, does recording and, and uh, still sings today. Uh, he's from Warica. Had opportunity to sing sometimes with him at some concerts in my earlier days of the quartet days. Uh, nice guy, so good people come here, but we're ready for kickoff, Cord. Well, let's get ready to roll. Dragons are going to have their leading kickoff. Bentley Thrall to kick for the Dragons. He has been, he can put it wherever he wants to. Let's see what we're going to do here. Bentley gives it the toe, gives the ball in the air. We get a fair catch. Signaled for by number five would be uh, Larry Capco. And they will start at the 30-yard line of their first drive. Dragons are coming off a big road win for last week at Dermont, Arkansas. Dragons last put week, it on points last Corey week. It kind of slipped our minds it was because we were so sure we were going to win the game, a tough game with Malika, but Dermont, Arkansas was Josh Bean's 200th win. Hand off here. Dragon defense stuffs that out. Won't be any game. They'll just start where they were. Dragons have a good play to Capco start. the them. ball carrier. Big Dom, the dominators, linebackers. Our linebackers have been playing well tonight. We see Dom's out there. Cord made the trip over from Silo over to be with us again tonight, and I'm glad he's here. Once yep. again, they're going to try the running game to the right side. Just a two-hour drive straight on Highway 70 for me. Figured it wasn't that too big of a drive I tried to make. I mean, couldn't beat it. Nia Corbin in on the stop. Nia playing that defensive end, one of the seniors. Bouncing Benny's playing the cover corner down below. Dakota Smith at the top and Kiki Berry on the back end. Third and long for the Eagles. Quarterback takes it, runs around the right side, tries to get it, just barely gets across the 35-yard line. Pick up of one. It's going to bring up fourth down. Eagles got to go three and out on this first drive. I don't see a better way the Dragons could start off on the defensive end. Well, they didn't take any chances, and I think they're, it's going to be in their playbook that they're going to take as much time as they can of that 40 seconds and uh, run some clock. The money man, Cash Fogger, back deep to receive for the Dragons. Joe, I might, to do the I might have to open up a couple windows. It's hot in here.
Faulkner takes the takes the punt and then crosses the 40, drops the ball, had a fumble momentarily, recovers it, and Dragons will be in business at about the 42, 43 yard line for their first possession. It'll be interesting to see what Josh breaks out here on the first series. Will he air it out or is he going to try to see if we can run? Run that, run the power. Well, I've known Dewar to air it out on the first drive. There's nothing like starting the game with a home run, Joe. And Pass we're going to have a home up. run. Braylon he's Lewis. He's one tackle. He's going to, he's going to make it back to the, about the 14. Nice, nice pass there by Killoffer as he hits that first pass to Braylon Lewis. I'm sorry, viewers, I'm lacking all my camera skills. We'll have it just right for you. Too busy talking. Dragons take it, handoff inside, goes to Kiki Berry, Kiki to the five, touchdown Dragons, 9.54, just that easy, just that quick, Keelan Berry takes it in, Dragons lead this with six to nothing. Coach Payne, he likes to start off with those home run plays, it's pretty hard to get your team back on the road on defense when you uh, putting up points in the first drive. Started on the 43-yard line after the muffed, muff, muff punt by Faulkner, but little just didn't take much time getting it right down the field, up 6-0. Man in motion shifts over. JoJo Waters to hold here for the extra point. Kicks up. He hits. Once again, Bentley Thrall is the money. He buries that one. The Dragons lead 954, seven to nothing. Cordell is a genius. He's able to update our scoreboard. We're learning on the <coughs> learning on the road. Joe, I didn't get that college degree for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and he graduated from the Harvard of the South. That is right. Eastern Oklahoma State University. <laughs> yep, they let me. They let me pass. They passed me on. Cord, back to the uh, 200th win. We just want to celebrate the 200th win of Josh Bean. His first win was when he was at Midway High School, and they were playing Haleyville, and they were up 35-6, to six, and he started playing everybody, and he and Kurt got a little, if you can imagine, the Bean Boys arguing. You can imagine the Bean Boys arguing. Kurt was trying to tell him we need to run the score up. And Josh said, no, we're going to play everybody. We're going to sit back and enjoy this. So his first win was there. His 100th win was at Porham on the road. And his 200th win at Dermot, Arkansas last week. Congratulations, Coach Bain. Millie Thrall to kick. Back deep for the Eagles is Simmons, number three. We go with a quick kick upside. Jumped on by Gun Gunner of the Eagles. They'll be in business right at the 47-yard line first and 10 their second go, Cord. Yeah, Dragons want to get that onside kick, maybe maybe keep that momentum going, but the Eagles are going to recover at about the 49, 50-yard line, about the 47. Let's see what their operation Dragons. is here. They've got this, they've got a uh, flanker at the top, a split at the bottom. He's going back to pass. So it has a man out in the flat. He drops it. Mm. You hate to see that, Joe. Seven, he had, he was in the wide open. No one within about 10 yards of him. The, he nearest, played man, loose. the nearest, man to, nearest man to him was uh, Bouncing Benny, but he was played off a little bit there. So they come out and open it up a little bit this second series. The Eagles are going to have any chance to keep this ball game. They've got to complete those plays like that. Second and long, second down 10. Quarterback takes it, runs the option, nowhere to go. Doty, along with Corbin, and the dominator, Dom Celestine. Third and long again for the Eagles. Try to get something with that run pass option play, but they just weren't able to go through that drag in front. Uh, Coach, uh, Coach Bean's doing a lot of rotation here with the nose guards and, and uh, doing some things here. And now Cash Faulkner's playing the nose guard position for the Dragons. Simmons takes it, mm. has a pass intended. 
the intended receiver is Porterfield goes incomplete. As my grandpa says, hit him in a bad spot. Hit him in a bad spot. Joseph Moore was on the coverage there. Eagles three and out. Punting. Eagles had two great opportunities to get some yards there. They just weren't able to come through. I think we got a hand on that. Had a fumble on the punt there. Picked up by Faulkner. He tried to get what he could get. Dragons will be in business from the 37-yard line, first and 10, the second go-round court. Dragons will try to add upon their 7-0 uh, touchdown drive at the first. Well, the punt, I think we got a hand on that. Good on the defense, and uh, it kind of gave the trajectory of the ball, made it a little more challenging. Dragons come to the line, kill off at quarterback, tosses it. Quarterback it's throwback. Be a reverse. Has a man down there. It's complete to Joseph Moore. Big Joseph plays, makes no a move. A tackle. Bye bye, bye Jello Folks High. What a play. Goes to the trickery there. Joseph Moore, the senior, gets into the end zone for the Dragons. They're up now 13 0 with 8. 44 to go. See the Dragons go to. McCourtney went a little trickery there. Tossed it and tossed it back. Kind of a mini flea flicker. Hey, wide open. Hey, soups has just got two ingredients. They no good. You got to mix it up to get that flavor. One for the extra point. JoJo Waters to hold. Bentley Thrall. He hits. The kick is good. Perfect. Dragons lead this one 14 nothing. Two drives, two touchdowns. Only thing's better is if we went to two, it would be 15 0. Both of them started about the same place, and the Dragons used little time. Three, uh, we've had a total of three offensive plays, and it's 14 nothing. Cord last night we had the number five ranked team in division, Class B Division Two, the Copan Hornets, who are having one of their best seasons ever. Our JV team beat the number five team last night. The young kids at Dewar get punked on by the older kids and practice every day, so it's it makes them better. And he's getting a lot of playing time with 40 plus kids. Josh Bean's done the right thing, getting games for them. They're three and zero in the year, and. Uh, it's paying off. Well, I think that has a lot to say about just the Dewar Dragon uh, tradition, just what's expected of the players, what's expected of each team. Uh, Dewar has just had a, such a phenomenal history of producing good football talent. And there's a lot of kids that are on the team at Dewar. Anywhere else they go, they're probably going to start. But Dewar is just so competitive and so good, only the best are going to get to play each week. Back deep again for the Warica Eagles is number three, Jackson Simmons. Billy Thrall to toe the ball once again. Comes to Simmons at the 20, goes to the right side. He's hit and brought down by Cash Faulkner initially. And Hayden Kaler got in on that too. Good coverage there by our guys on that side going down on special teams. So they'll be starting at the 25-yard line for their first for their third possession of the evening. And let there be light. And there was light and it was good. The Phew. lights come on here at come on here in Warica. I guess they could afford the electric bill, Joe. Cy Sloan Stadium here in Warica. Man in motion, Brody Franco, flag on the play. Dragger put Dragons putting that pressure on the Eagles. Procedure, a little eager on the front edge there. Number 75, Benji Porterfield moved. So it'll be first and 15 after the penalty.
Coach Joe Allen in his first season here at Warica. Doing a rebuild. Give us to Capco, no what place for him to go. By dragging front, just super solid up front. Uh, let's see, we got Scott Hood playing the. He's in. The, he's running in that tackle. rotation there with the nose. Hey, uh, they're just solid Clark up Hope front. Clark the deep one in tonight. He's in. Have some of those different looks. Having that size at eight man up on that front, that line where they're in the trenches, man, that makes a big difference in the play. Gets the pass away, almost intercepted. Oh, man. Those ends are putting pressure on the quarterback, Joe. He's uh he's a little frustrated. They're on him quick. Good coverage there by Kiki Berry, Dakota Smith. Joseph Moore back at the free safety, bouncing Benny down here at the bottom. Weingart split to the bottom for Warica. Simmons takes the ball and finds some running room. It's going to come short of the uh, first down marker, though. They're going to have to kick off. It's going to bring fourth down. They're going to go for it here, trailing 14 to nothing, 7.38. Eagles are going for it. Big play right here. Trying to draw the Dragons offside. Timeout charged to the Eagles. I guess the Eagles saw something we didn't, Joe. Well, I think right here he's going to – I think he's either going to be do or die right here for them. They're going to say we're down 14 nothing. We need to get two yards. We need to try and get two yards. If we don't get two yards, it's going to be a long night anyway. But, And he may fool us and go out and then shift into a punt formation out of her, or he may do a quick kick, I do like a rugby kick where they pitch it out and kick it on the side or something. But uh, Dragon defense, uh, he got out and got free that time. Yeah, most of the time, you know, we watch on TV, college, NFL, you know, going for a forward in your own 38-yard line, that's really rarely to see. But 8 man is one of the deals where if you let three, four scores get ahead of you, it's like that car in front of the highway that gets in front of you and gets that lane. It's just hard to come back. Cooler heads have prevailed right here. Cooler heads have prevailed. He's decided he's going to punt Porter Field into the punt formation. Send Simmons in a little late. Porterfield handles it, gets the kick away this time. Nobody back is going to take a eagle roll all the way down to the 30-yard line where the Dragons will take over. They've started at the 43 the last two possessions. They'll be on the 30-yard line, 70-yard 70, 70 drive to start here with Peyton Kilhoffer calling the signals, and we got to talk about those guys on the line up front, number uh, 25, the the state uh, power lift all stater Isaac Pallet center. Along with him is Damian Smith and Big Scott Hood tonight, and Nia Corbin are tied in. Man in motion, going to option this way. Kelhoffer keeps it. He goes right up the middle, sticks his foot in the ground. He's to the 30. He's to the 20, he's to the 10, dives for the end zone. And he's going to be just short, nice scamper there. He's going to be short down, to, down at the two-yard line, 68-yard scamper from Peyton Kilhoffer. First two drives, we went long with the arm. Now we're going to go long with the legs. Coach Bean likes to mix it up. But can't say enough about those guys up front. Boy, that was just good blocking. Read that option perfectly. And kept it, stuck foot in the ground, and went. Bouncing Benny down at the bottom in motion he is Faulkner. And we have procedure against the Dragons. First penalty of the night against the Dragons. So first and goal from the seven. Oh, my head, he can throw that flag pretty hard. That was a good toss. That was about 11, 12 yards. Yeah, for a... 12 to 10 to 12 mile wind out of the north and west. Now the flag that, is limited. That's a pretty good toss. Wide open touchdown 
Joseph Moore. Eight-yard touchdown pass from Peyton Kilhoffer to Joseph Moore. Dragons up 20 to nothing, 642 here in the first quarter remain. Waters in. Waters to hold and Bentley Thrall on to do the extra point on the kick. When that snap is good and everything's good, he can get in the rhythm. He can just put it through. Yeah, it's good to see the deer kicker get a little action today. Oh, they're going to sneak it. They're going to go through. JoJo Waters took the snap as the holder and went right up the gut for the two-point conversion. So at 6.42, the Dragons extend their lead to 22 to nothing. The officials stroll towards the center of the field and both teams getting ready. Uh, they're be interesting to see, will they air it or they will they are going to be a little more patient? But the Dragons have had their way tonight. Three great possessions there. Couldn't ask for a better start from the Dewar. I bet now they're going to try to mix it up and see what different plays they can get going because, let's just face it, you know, Dewar is a more formidable opponent tonight. And sometimes down the road we're going to have to try different plays on what's not working. And we're going to have to be able to go back to a point and say, all right, we ran it this time. We, we want to be able to say that we can run new plays because we ran them in the past uh, because we might not always need that big ball because they might have the supporters guarding us. It's, uh, it'll be interesting to see what Dewar goes with. Back deep once again is Jackson Simmons, number three. And they've got three guys back in the middle. Going to see if he's going to pooch it or kick deep. Over the head of number five, which is Capco, but it's picked up by Simmons. Simmons runs, takes a knee, or slip right there, and they'll be in possession from about the 27-yard line for their for their next possession here with 6.39 to go. Coach Allen from Morica, see what he's going to try to do here. Got Isaac Powell and Holtma and Corbin at the – down down three are ends and nose guard there and we got bounce and Benny at the bottom. Dakota Smith at the top. Kiki Berry on the back end. Dom and Doty are linebackers. Quick pass out here to number two. He catches it, hit immediately by bouncing Benny Atigua with the he just right on him like stink on a skunk on that one. Well, the thing is, Joe, that what, that wasn't even his primary man. He was guarded. He had the outside receiver and one that came in, so he covered two men. Great play by number four. Gives them second and long. Second short is better than second and long. As uh, they come to the line of scrimmage, offset to the right. Simmons takes it. Finds a little bit of running room, picks up a yard. Powerlifter just monsters his way through that line, just like not through a butter. Third down and 13. Third down and 13 for Warica. You know, last night by playing a uh, JV game, he's almost got to play the older kids a little bit. But I know if this continues to roll like it does, some of those younger guys are going to see some play in action after play having played last night. Warica gives on the give straight ahead. Oh, man, downhill play there. Bouncing Benny come in along with Dom and along with Nia Corbin. Well, it's that easy. It's now fourth and ten. So Porterfield's back to punt. Dragons are holding up and just not going to take any chances. They back uh, Joseph Moore back to about the 35, 36 yard line. Porterfield's kick. He tries to run. He is hit and brought down there by Kiki Berry and Nia Corbin. So they didn't get the punt off. The Dragons will have field position of the best 
field position of the night, starting from their 15-yard line. Yeah, Dragon saw that read. They tucked it under, tried to go with a fake, but that parry, uh, Dragon lied, just got through the uh, tackle, read that fake real good. Braylon Lewis is running back to the right of quarterback Kilhoffer. Give inside. And they did the double option there. Touchdown, Dragons. Lewis took the ball, handed it to Thrall. Thrall then runs the option with Kilhoffer. Touchdown, Dragons. Yeah, that kinda, now, this was way back in your day. I mean, I was way too young, but kind of similar to a hook and ladder play. Similar to that, and uh, it's just that uh, a lot of, okay, back in the old single wing days or a lot of the wing T stuff, you did a lot of inside stuff with the wing back, and you do some, as Pat Jones say, there's a lot of cute little things you can do with that. <laughs> Thrall on once again, 4.30 to go. Dragons lead this one 28 to nothing. We always shift over from one side to the other. Corbin set. He hits. So with 4.30 to go here in the first quarter, the Dragons up 29 to nothing here in Warica. You know, Cord, my goal in life was to coach until I coached. I have either coached or played in all 77 counties. I think I've knocked it down to about eight counties that I haven't played in, coached in, or been a part of. And uh, I've been to all 77 counties because I have, when you scout girls basketball, baseball, softball, and football, you go all over the state. And we have a great state, and I spent a lot of time going to cheapskate, staying in state, but uh, this is a, this is a nice part of Oklahoma. Yeah, they have a beautiful campus. This is a beautiful setting. Uh, this is really, when they say stadium, this is really a stadium. It is. It I looks mean, like a small college stadium. They had 11-man days, and they've had some really good teams uh, over the years. And Coach Allen's going to bring this program back. But the Dragons just uh, doing what the Dragons do. Well, I can already tell you one thing. It's better than Southeastern's football field. I mean, they got some people that can uh, – we can at least uh, sit down, you know, a numerous amount of people in this. You know, Southeast, you better bring your lawn chair. Bentley Thrall to kick back deep once again is Simmons. They have that 4-3-1 look. Going to see what Thrall does. He kicks it deep. Comes right to Simmons at about the 20-yard line, and he fumbles it, picks it up, recovers it. He'll be down about the 18-yard line. They'll be in business once again. But the Dragons have had great field position. Uh, starting at their 40, own 43, their own 43, their own 30, and then starting the best of the night was on the 15-yard line there. And uh, Dragons took advantage. So we've seen a little bit of everything out of the uh, playbook of the Dragons tonight. Yep. Big game in Class uh, B tonight, though. Uh, number one in B, B2 is ceiling is down to number three, Caddo, tonight to play Caddo in Caddo. So we'll try to update that one for you later. Warwick is going to have their longest play of the night, picking up about eight yards on that run. Nice pickup there by Simmons. Second down and one pickup of nine. Smitty's the nose guard. Hopma and Corbin are the ends. And Doty and Celestine, the linebackers. Doty playing downhill. They got that push there, but boy, the Dragons got after it. Work is going to pick up their first down of the night. Something good to move on. Well, I was misinformed. That's MJ, MJ uh, Furch at the linebacker. But they got enough for their first first down of the night, Cord. They did. You know, it's always good to get that first first down of the night, you know, down 29 to nothing. Simmons takes it, sees some room. He sticks his foot in the ground and goes, makes a cut. Oh, they're on the move now. 
Kiki Berry on the tackle there, but that's enough. Nice pick up there. Up to the 43-yard line, first and 10. Warica, the Eagles are on the march. Eagles have something going now. We're back to the original starting lineup playing now. Simmons takes it, fakes it uh, to Weingart, keeps it himself on the option, and he gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be second and ten. It's like David Smith's going to take a little breather on the sideline. He's running kids in out of the uh, the ones that didn't play last night. He's playing a lot of guys, and it's going to pay off dividends later in the playoff run. Option again. Toss outside fumble. Well, they're going to fumble. There. Looks like the Dragons have it. Dragons will have the ball. Nia uh, Corbin at the bottom of the pile. He got it and snatched it away. Dragons have good field position here. Starting on the 43-yard line again, but this time not their own 43. Yeah, another comment I wanted to make, Joe, is even uh, last weekend, it's just so big an advantage to have, you know, around 30, 40 players on the squad when compared to about, what, 15, 18 players on an end because you got fresh guys you can run in over and over. And the other end, a lot of them are two platoon players, and you're just going to get tired down. Killhoffer back to pass, has a receiver down there intended for Cash Faulkner. Had Cash Faulkner, he just tried to go there. Benny was covered up. Coming up late on the outside over there was Kiki Berry. He was open, but goes incomplete. Second and ten. Waiting on what Coach Bean and Coach Staff are going to call in. Coach Killer will be in the eyes in the sky tonight. 13 on the play clock. Two minutes to go here in the first quarter. More down at the bottom. Pass there, dropped. Nice pass, it was in, the, in and out of the hands. Had Joseph Ford at the bottom. If you want to be a little nitpicky, I would say kind of threw behind him. A little behind. Catchable ball, no doubt. But it's hard to catch that ball down around your knees when you got a defender on your right side. Lewis in the backfield along with Kilhoffer. Got twins down here, Kiki Berry and Bouncing Benny. Kilhoffer runs a little fake there, options it, keeps it on the option, down to the 20 yard line. That's enough for a Dewar Dragon. First down and a first family credit union first down for the Dragons. Had to get that in their court. That's right. You gotta gotta uh, get them sponsors in there. They keep uh, buying that gas so Coach Ross and Coach Staff can get that yellow dog on down the road. Snap goes inside, handoff to Lewis. Lewis right up the gut, getting some blocking, keeps those legs churning down to the five. Five piece of running there. Simmons, Simmons, Capco, and Weingart on the stop. You know you're you know you're in bad shape when your leading tacklers are your safeties and your corners. Nice run there by Braylon Lewis. Kilhoffer takes it, going to option, keeps it himself untouched into the end zone. With 104 to go here in the first quarter, the Dragons on the board again. 35 to nothing. Well, when it rains, it pours, Joe. He has had long runs, short runs, medium runs. We've had long passes, short passes. The Dragons have done it all tonight. Throw on to kick JoJo Waters to hold. Got to get Doty shifted over to the right side now. Roman Dale on the far on the top, tied in. Hood and Big Cade Burgell balls down, kicks up. He hits, once again, perfect again, off the toe of Bentley Thrall. 1.04 to go here in Warica, the first quarter. Dragons 36, the Eagles 0. 
We'll be back with more Deer Dragon football after this. Pioneer.com. Oklahoma's number one high school streaming service, Scordle.tv. Find out more at Scordle.com slash stream. The AMG team is based in Oklahoma City and delivers your organization revenue enhancement through a combination of data. The mouth of South Joe Fowler along with Cord McDonald back to action here. Dragons up with 104 to go here in the first period by a score of 36 to 0. Bentley Thrall once again to kick. Back deep once again is Simmons with their 4-3-1 look. Let's see where Bentley goes with it. We've tried a little bit of everything tonight. Boots it deep. Simmons takes it right at the 12-yard line. He's out to the 20. Across the 25. He's to the sideline. He sticks a foot in the ground. He's gone. Bye-bye until the folks high. Jackson Simmons has just taken that one to the house for the Warwick Eagles. They get on the scoreboard. Uh-oh, we got some pyrotechnics. So the home team has scored. Dragons give up one of the special teams there. Uh, he made his cut back, and there was no containment there. Once he got to the 40, they couldn't have caught him on a motorcycle. So the Dragons lead this one, lead this one by a score of 36 to six. They're going for two. Sim is at quarterback. Offset to the left of him is Jonathan Weingart. Gives it to Weingart. They're going to get it. Weingart gets a two-point conversion. So just like that, the kickoff goes. And here in the first quarter, it's 36 to eight. The Eagles have life here as they have finally scored here in the first quarter. Well, the Dragons do have the score, but Eagles are going to have the longest play of the night, Joe. That was a dandy. Taking it, it in around the 15 to 13-yard line, 87-yard kickoff return by Jackson Simmons. Uh, Coach Allen was talking about that he's a really good kid and, and uh, really athletic, leads the, you know, he's their quarterback, good leader. And he was telling us about a seventh, eighth, and ninth grade team is undefeated and pro probably a good bunch. And a lot of those kids that are going to be fresh for next year, he's going to be counting on to fill in and add what he needs. He also has a uh, player on the sideline, one of their better players, has not been able to play tonight. And he said he probably wouldn't get him back until they actually start district games. So uh, hopefully he'll get to come back. But uh, you still coach him up. Coach Allen and his staff still coach him up and getting after it. So we've got us a dandy here at Warica. Let's see who we have back deep. We have the money man, Cash Faulkner, and Dakota Smith. Kick goes. It's going to be a little pooch kick. Scooped up there by JoJo Waters. <clears throat> JoJo Waters takes it out to the 43-yard line. Once again, we've had success, Cord, start at the 43. Well, Dragons are... Going to get to see how they respond to a touchdown, Joe. So they're going to be having a 43-yard, starting at the 43 again. Going to be sending some different kids out on the line, it looks like, this time. Got Joseph Moore. Big Hood is in. Scott Hood, senior. Along with Damian Smith. Can't say enough about these senior kids. What a good bunch we have. Kilhoffer back to throw. Hits JoJo Waters. Waters catches it. Crosses midfield. He's going to be short of the first down. Pick up a nine. Nice pitch and catch there with Corden JoJo. Dragons in hurry up here. He's going to throw it again. Throws to Waters once again. Nice little pitch and catch out across the 40 down to the 39-yard line. 
Well, JoJo Waters show why he is the coolest receiver on the Dragon Bunch. He made a catch last night that they called incomplete that I wish we could have had replay. Everybody knew it was there except one official. The one that made the call. Pass wide open is Joseph Moore. Chief Joseph with the touchdown. Bye-bye. Tell the folks hi. Well, Dragons are spawn. About as good as you wanted to do. Get another six. Pepe was right on money there. So we add six more to the score. 42 to eight with three seconds left in the first quarter. We've put up 42. 43 to come off the toe of Bentley Thrall. Hope I didn't jinx him by saying so. <laughs> Waters to hold. Snap back and down. Kicks up. He hits. 43 to 8. Durer, 43. Well, Marika, 8 with three seconds remaining here in the first period. You didn't pull a Chris Collinsworth and jinx him. As they talk it over the sidelines, we'll go. We'll be right back with more Durer Dragon football after this science, innovative marketing, and business automation. We think like owners and behave as long-term partners. Delivering measurable results for nearly 20 years has made the AMG team known for our ability to efficiently and effectively execute objectives. We are ready to help raise your organization to a higher level of success, so visit us today at theamgteam.com. Dr. Matt Dieselhorst at Dieselhorst Sports Orthopedics can help you get game day ready. Dr. Dieselhorst works with athletes of all ages, taking a coordinated approach to accelerate return to play and maximize athletic performance. His work with pros in sports training, injury prevention, bracing, functional rehabilitation, and... Joe Fowler and Cord McDonald from Warica. We are back after the commercial break. Ready to kick once again is Bentley Thrall. I think they'll keep an eye on Mr. Simmons. You used to talk about last week having to run kids in. It was 80%, I mean, it was like 80% humidity. The coaches' pants and shirts were soaked. We were soaked up there where we were at. Uh, it was Comes just... down to Simmons at the 15 to the 20, puts, makes a move. He's hit and brought down immediately right there. Clark Holtman along with Hayden Kaler on the special teams, and Mr. Simmons couldn't get loose. No, couldn't get loose on that one, Joe. Yeah, that Arkansas heat last weekend was a doozy. I mean, a doozy. Uh, I mean, it, it's, it's a hot that we couldn't even hardly keep from having sweat drip down us. It's a hot. We're going to take a look at our scoreboard. O'Keen 22, Pioneer 8, number 7 Hollis, and number 2 Laverne 8 to 6. Number 7 Hollis taking on number 2 Laverne 8 to 6. Kyoto up 24 nothing on Kyoto in the first quarter. Dragons are up here. Quentin the head of Arcoma, one of our district district opponents, district in our district, Quentin's up 24 to nothing. Garber up on Cub Doug, 12 to 8. Number one in number one in class B division one is Garber. They're up 12 to 8 over number four in division two. Covington Douglas 12 to 8. Drum right all over Canadian. Ceiling, number one ceiling and number four Caddo. Ceiling's up 14 to nothing in the first quarter. Bear down. So we're back to action. I updated those scores for you. The Dragons kick off. They'll have the ball on the 20 yard line. The Eagles of Warica. Simmons, the quarterback. Weingart, his running back. And this time to Weingart up the middle. Corbin on the tackle. There's a group of right there. The first pile was started there by Isaac Powell. And Doty and Furge cleaned it up. Pretty good play there. Pickup of one. They're going to give him one yard on that. Second and nine. 
Option, takes it up the middle, nowhere to run. Dragon's trying to strip him. We're winning the push up front, and those same guys, Porterfield and all those guys, have had to play both ways, and it's starting to show a little bit. We're Start winning the battle up front. Clark Copma and Nia Corbin at the ends. Got Cash, the money man Faulkner at the nose guard, running him in right now. Kiki Barry, the linebacker, along with Furch. Bouncing Mitty at the top. Dakota Smith, Joseph Moore back. Pass was intended from, ja uh, from uh, Simmons, Jackson Simmons, to Capco, no good. So it's going to be third and long for the Eagles. Yeah, I like that old saying. I think Vince Lombardi said fatigue makes cowards of us all. Just a fact of life when we got more bodies than the other team, it's just going to be a matter of time before that old heartbeat and that sweat starts to drip and take a cold. Quarterfield oh, got the kickoff. No. We didn't get a hand on it. We got a flag. We've got rough in the kicker. Oh, I don't know about that, Joe. That'll be an automatic first down via the penalty for the Eagles and then move their field position up a little bit. I don't think that's where the stick was, but he was getting ready to move it, wasn't he? He was getting yeah. ready to go, and they're going to march it off. 15-yard penalty after the penalty. Ball comes to rest at the 35. They'll be in business via the penalty. First and 10 for the Eagles. 10-26 to go. Dragons up 43-8. to eight. Simmons to pass. Gives a little hitch fake. Has a man down there all oh, just out of reach. Intended for Franco. Brody Franco, the intended receiver, just oh, just out of his reach. Nice play there by the Eagles. If he yeah, had that, that'd have been he'd had something to do, or he would have had a good yardage there. That'd have been at least a 40-yard pickup, Joe. Big opportunity missed by the Eagles. More now in the corner out here. Doty along the linebacker with Furch. Bouncing many at the top. Simmons going to keep it on the option. He keeps it nowhere to go. And there was a sandwich of about three of them. That's big uh, Nick Bowers at the nose guard along with, with the sandwich, part of the sandwich. He was in the middle with him and Simmons. And it was squeezed down by Nick Bowers and Nia Corbin. Find the play there, loss on the play. Third and 12. Court, it's almost like OU football when it's third, it's better to be third and short than third and long all night. Yeah, the other night, they really just. Simmons got loose. He sticks a foot in the ground. He got the yardage. He read that perfectly, kept it himself. Bowers made the tackle. Yeah, I think that's a good comparison, you see, between Dewar and Warwick. It's kind of like OU and Tennessee. Uh, just the fact that uh, Maximus Worthy got in on that little tackle right there. The Maximus line of OU hit. is just kind of hurt, and it shows how much bigger guys and healthier guys have an advantage in the game. First and ten for the Eagles. Pass intended there for Franco goes in complete. It's going to be second and ten. Simmons got a little bit of, he's got toughness. But I'm going to say, yeah, he's hung with it. He had the kick return. He's run the option there and had some success. That penalty helped him, kind of give him a little new life. So the Eagles have done some things tonight here, continuing to try to cut into this deficit of 43-8 to eight here in the second period. Wanted to hand off there, and it was Dragon snipped all out. all over him. Furge, along with Isaac Powell, Nick Bowers, it will stop. Defense played well tonight. Yeah, having those fresh players in really made a difference. Looks like we're going to have a timeout. Charge the timeout to the Eagles as they take a timeout. We'll be back with more Deer Dragon football after this. Work seamlessly with his medical and surgical expertise. Get started by going to Diesel Horse Sports and Orthopedics. Let Dr. Matt Diesel Horse get you back on the field. Backing all Oklahoma athletes on the field and off. 
Support your school's booster club and get your business in front of thousands of potential customers. Talk about a win-win. Advertising packages start on this streaming station for less than $10 a game. Call 405-726-0835 or email adam at squirtle.com right now for more information. break. Third and long for the Eagles. Simmons looks to pass. Has a man down there. It is intercepted by number 22, Dakota Smith. Trying to pick up blockers. Makes a cut. Sticks his foot in the ground. Nice deal there. He just ran the pattern and went down and caught that and returns it from about the 15 back to the 35 yard line putting Dewar Dragons. Dakota Smith well, it's funny, Joe, because I seen that pass. It was going to end up about the 25, 26 yard line, and I put my camera down, and I just seen white jerseys. I said, "I don't know who he's throwing to." And sure enough, we get a dragon interception out of the throw. Well, that may have been one of those deals where if they intercept it, hopefully he'll catch it, and we can down it here and be better than a punt. <coughs> Dragons in business, first and ten. Braylon Lewis, running back, pass complete. Pass reception there by number 80, Keith Bush. Well, the youngsters got in and got him a catch. <coughs> Kill offer back to pass. Oh, <coughs> nearly picked off. P.I. on that. Goes incomplete. A lot of contact by that corner, Joe. Ethan Hope with the intended receiver. One of the youngsters getting in, and he didn't run. He should have ran a little crisper pattern. He took it into two men there, almost intercepted. Dragons recover. Give to Lewis. Sticks his foot in the ground. He keeps going. He's churning. Keep those legs going. He's fighting inside the 30 down to the 29-yard line. Fine piece of running there by Braylon Lewis. Clock continuing to run, 7.26 to go, up 43 to 8. Kilhoffer has a man. Hits Lewis with the pass, swings it out of the backfield. He takes it down, close to the first down, knocked out of bounds. And that's enough to get it close. And it's enough for a Dewar Dragon first down. Braden Lewis, a little pitch and catch there on the give this time to Lewis. Pick up of five, pick up a four, second down six. Dragons really are wanting to establish a run game right here. Taking advantage of that uh, exhausted front line of the Eagles. Ethan Hopma, the receiver down at the bottom. Bush at the top. Pepe keeps it on the option around that side. They sniff that out. Weingard in on the stop for the Eagles. But he did pick up a little bit of yardage there. He's going to bring up third down two. Ball on the 30. Dragon making some late subs. Joseph Moore comes back into the lineup along with Kiki Berry. Third down two, two, two plays to get two yards. Eight on the play clock, gets the step. Inside fake, has two receivers down there. Tended for Naya Corbin, it's gonna be fourth and two. 
in field. and out of the hands. See if the Dragons might try for a field goal or see if they can push it in the end zone. Pepe stays out there. They're going for it. Inside give to Kiki Berry. And they're going to get it. Waiting to see if there's yellers. Bye-bye till the folks high. Touchdown, Dragons. Just that easy. Just that quick on fourth and two. Kiki Berry takes it in. The Dragons up. 49 to 8. JoJo Waters brings the tee out. It'll get it set as Bitley thralls on to attempt the extra point. Got Doty shifted over to the right again. Snaps kick down. He hits. He's perfect again. We slapped half a hundred on him. It's 50 to 8 with 5.39 to go here in Warrica, Oklahoma. We'll be back with more Dur Dragon football after this. Surface Experts is your one-stop shop for all of your hard surface damage. If you have a scratch, chip, crack, burn mark, or hole, we can handle it. We repair all types of hard surfaces, including stone and laminate countertops, wood and LVP floors, tubs, showers, and cabinets. We can also grind and polish glass cooktops and remove scratches from stainless steel elevators and appliances. We focus on repairing just the spot with the damage so you don't have to replace the whole surface. We work with apartments and residential properties all over Oklahoma. Give us a call today to schedule your repair. In our business and at our firm, it's all about preparation, preparation. Back to action. Dragons to kick with 5.39 to go, leading 50 to 8. Bentley throw to kick once again. Hayden Kaler. On the special teams. Kick taken at the 20. Picks up and gets what he can get and got out of bounds right at the near the 25-yard line, but they'll be in business first and 10. <laughs> see if the Dragons do here. I see Scott Hood coming out. Roman Dale at one of the defensive ends. We have uh, in, uh, William Magnus playing one of the defensive ends. So he's getting some of the young kids in, Dakota Smith, Joseph, Got Furch and Doty at the linebacker. Give this time is to Weingart. Weingart picks up a couple to be second and eight. They're going to keep it on the ground here. A lot of things going on around the school. I've got a, I'll have the uh, driver's ed car ready for them to go to the state fair tomorrow. They have the chicken show and the cupcake wars. Brooklyn County will be taking them there tomorrow. And then next week's going to be a busy week with uh, the Dewar Lady Dragons, ranked number three, and their uh, softball will be hosting the regional tournament, We're waiting to see exactly how there were some games being played today that depends on who wins, who will be there. So, But uh, come out and support to the Lady Dragons on Thursday as they'll be hosting the regional tournament. Third down at eight for the Eagles. Give this time to Weingart. Oh, right there, Dakota Smith comes up and meets him, gets a little help. Gets a little help there from Clark Holtma and Doty. And Magnus gets in on that. So it's going to bring up fourth and five. Potterfield back to punt once again. Dragons just putting the fire on that front end line. Them red jerseys start to turn they for a Joseph just Moore. So it's all safety is deep, but he's only about. 
10 yards back, punts away. Good punt over the head of Moore. Takes the drag and roll, and it is down there by Capco, and the, dra the Dragons will be in business with another possession just the other side of midfield. 46-yard line. I have to say, Joe, this has been one of the better officiated games I've seen this year. Really has been. Uh, you know, the roughing the kicker, we didn't get a hand on it. That, that's a close call. But uh, other than that, they've pretty been, been fair and balanced. Kill off a rolls to the right. Has a man caught. Pushed out of bounds there. Simmons on the defense. Reception was out of bounds, so it's going to be second ten. Stops the clock at 348. Dom playing the left guard. Smitty's over at the right guard. Damian Smith. Option. Killoffer keeps it. Breaks into the open. He's the 40. Stiffs arms a guy. Crosses a 30 and is hit and brought down there by Bohannon, number 44 for the Eagles. The Dragons move the sticks. That's enough for a Deer Dragon first down, a first family federal credit union first down. Gives to Lewis. Lewis runs around the right side. He's got some blocking. Keeps those legs churning, hit and brought down by a host of So Dragons move the sticks again, Cord. That's how it's been all night, Joe. Using Lewis this time. Good to see Brennan get some yardage here. First and ten. Fakes to Braylon. Rolls to the left. Has a man open. Joseph Moore. Touchdown, Dragons. Just that easy, just that quick. The Dragons get on the board again. Raising the score to 56 to 8 with 304 to go here in the half. Bentley Thrall. Going to do the kicking. JoJo Waters to hold. Eighteen on the play clock as Dragons getting ready for the extra point. Bentley has been perfect. Snaps back. They're going to run the option. JoJo Water keeps it himself right there. Dragons 58. The Warwick Eagles 8. We're up 50 with 304 to go in the half. That was a exclamation mark. Uh, yeah, that was two exclamation marks, Joe. You know, Wiz, I, the Dragons will be off next week, and it'll be a time that we can work on us. It's all about us in practices anyway. It's not what other people do, but it'll also give us the opportunity to go see some teams that we may need to see later. So with the staff that we have, and also the girls are playing softball, but at the same time on those fri uh, Thursdays and Friday nights, some of us may be somewhere uh, watching some games and getting things together. You know, sometimes we get the film, but you, sometimes you need to see them with your own eyes. You can see some things that you don't pick up on film, and it'll be a time for that. But it's all about the Dragons getting to that place where you're getting better each week, and you learn from your mistakes. And I, even in practice today, as the warm-ups, they were coaching them up out there. The court used down there. Coach Bean was getting in there chilly over some things because they weren't. They were just lackadaisical running some routes and. And he wants the timing to be perfect, so they're going to coach him up. But we'll use these opportunities to get ready for the future. So Absolutely. Again. You know, if you want to be different, you got to do something uh, different than other people are doing. You know, everyone else is practicing each week. You know, everyone else has the same rules they got to follow when they practice in the summer, in the fall, during the week, 
Well, you got to ask yourself every day. Now, I don't know the, que the answer to this question, but you got to ask yourself every day, what makes us different? How are we going to get ahead of the competition this week? It's all about us. Uh, Weingart took the ball, uh, muffed the reception, but he had a pretty good return. Gets it out across the 35 to the 36-yard 30, 30, uh, line. Will be first and 10 for the Eagles with 2.53 to go. The drag is leading by 50. So it's been a quite eventful year thus far. And uh, once again, congratulations to Coach Bean on his 200th win. Give to Weingart. He goes around to the left side, gets behind the blocking there of the Porterfields. And he picks up some yardage. Got, let's see who we got there at nose guard. Some of these young kids in can't quite see for sure who that is. But Coach Bean's playing some of the young ones now. Pass, nearly intercepted over on that side. Is this 75 who you're looking for? The nose guard. The pass goes incomplete. It's going to bring up third down and six for the Eagles. This one has had a little bit of everything, but it's kind of went quickly. Well, last week it went on forever because I don't think the officials knew what they were trying to do at the clock that we're going to play four quarters, and it was. I don't think no one in the press box knew what they were doing either. I mean, we <laughs> so had anyway. parents cussing at coaches. Simmons on the keep with the option around that left side. Perch knocks him out of bounds right short of midfield, along with Faulkner. Yeah, last week, if you want a definition of an Arkansas rodeo, you had one. I mean, we had. Coaches coming on the field, fans coming on the field. People had the press box yelling at coaches. Even had a player ejected for, actually, I want to say the kick that he had on that official's flag might have been longer than any Durr punt that night. <laughs> fine, fine trip last week. Coach Allen getting some of his younger ones in on this drive. Simmons keeps it, takes it to midfield. He's going to bring it up to second. And long. Second down eight. Pickup of two symbols on the keeper. Sean Bohannon in at the running back for the Eagles. Twins at the top. Give this time as to Bohannon up the middle. He's a big power runner. Got a little bit of momentum ahead. Zach Moore on the stop. Some of the young kids getting in on the action. Andrew Payton, we want to say a shout out to, I'm sure he's listening to us. As he's in the, serving the United States Army is Jacob Payton. Jacob I well, hope you're listening tonight. Thank you for all you do and for your service to our country. Give to Bohannon again. He gets some more yardage there. He's going to bring up fourth and short. Fourth down two. Five seconds. Four seconds. Three seconds. We're done. That's the... That's the old ball game. Final score. Doer 58 to 8. Gord, your thoughts on tonight? Well, I, I didn't know there was a run rule after the half. I guess you get 50 ahead in the half, you're we're done, aren't we? We're done. We're done. All right. Well, I think the Doer Dragons come out, want to hit home runs, go all the way. I think they did that. There are some other things that uh, they wanted to try. They wanted to try the run pass option, they wanted to try the long balls. They tried to dominate the line, and I believe they did. It's just a great overall win of seeing everything the Dragons did with that win tonight that well, maybe the down thing, the load they can implement that. Well, the only thing that we can find to criticize is a good athlete gets a ball and, and they scored on a special team. But the special teams have been special for most of the year. So when that happened, 
But we, it was, it was total dominance, and, and it's a game that we had because the JV played last night, and they all played quite a bit. And it was an opportunity for them to have their night last night. But we have to play our guys to get some conditioning and get ready for the playoff run. But uh, just a hats off to the Dragons. They were the better team tonight. Hats off to Coach Allen. Keep coaching them up. Warica is going to be on the rise here in the future as young as they are. But uh, the Dragons scored every way possible tonight with the, on the ground, in the air. We saw some plays we haven't seen. A fine play by everybody. And uh, we'll be uh, – We'll be off next week, but uh, get out and support the Dewar Lady Dragons, and we will be hosting the regional at Al Kessel Field at Wiley Rowell Park in Dewar starting Thursday morning at, I think, 10 o'clock, 10 a.m. There will be games all day long. But come out and support and watch some good softball right there in town, support our kids. But for uh, our engineer and uh, Josh Kilhoffer, and for my engineer up here that ran the ran the did the color tonight, color commentation, ran the camera and the computer for me tonight, uh, was Cord McDonald, or, and it's good to get with Cord. And then I failed to say this last week, but his dad, Mike, coached football. We did not only coach softball together, but Mike was on the staff when we were in the Johnny Bohannon era. And uh, so Mike McDonald, we shout, shout out to him and Kate. Hopefully they're listening to us tonight, but we're getting ready to sign off. As I always say, we have rounded third and headed for home. And bye-bye and tell the folks I.